Hello, my name is Michael Cook. I am Director of Applied Technology for Epoxy Curing Agents, a part of the Crosslinkers Group. Today in this presentation is entitled Polyamine Curing Agents Meeting the Industry Need for Enhanced Productivity. In today's world, the fundamental requirements within the coatings industry can be distilled down into three major drivers. Coating suppliers are being asked to provide technology which enable their customers to enhance productivity, deliver superior long-term performance and balance these attributes with the need of the environment and offer improved EH&S benefits. Our role as suppliers of curing agents is to provide our customers with the best technology solutions to meet these emerging needs. Within the scope of this paper, I will review the new developments Evonik is working on in the area of epoxy amine curatives, stating how kinetics plays an important role as well as creating challenges and how we have used our understanding in this area to develop a new polycyclic amine building block which delivers faster cross-linking. I will then highlight how we have utilised this new amine in the development of curing agents which provide rapid through cure in high solid epoxy primers meeting the industry's need for speed. Two-pack epoxy coatings have an established track record for providing excellent corrosion and chemical resistance in heavy-duty protective and marine applications. The reaction between amine curative and epoxy follows second-order kinetics, and the early stages of cure are driven by the concentration of epoxy and amines within the coating. As the two liquids react, Low molecular weight strands form which begin to chain extend. The molecular weight of the polymer and hence viscosity of the system increases and then as the glass transition temperature defined as T sub G of the system approaches the curing temperature T sub Q, reaction kinetics is less of a driver and the diffusion process becomes critical for systems to reach the gel point. For initial systems where the relative concentrations of A and E are low then the kinetic reaction is slow and the epoxy coating system remains open longer. To the customer, this means systems will have a long pot life, but coatings will take longer to completely through cure and develop their final properties. If the concentration of A and E are increased, then kinetics is very dominant, resulting in a rapid molecular weight and viscosity buildup. However, this may result in systems not reaching the true gel point due to B-staging or vitrification, and the diffusion process stops. When this happens, customers will see a reduced pot life, coatings may appear to dry fast, but there will be a significant degree of undercure, which will result in a loss of coating performance. So cross-linking is both kinetics and diffusion driven, which impacts the final properties. And ideally, we would like an amine that has fast kinetics and a rapid diffusion process which continues in order for full through cure to provide coatings with improved performance properties. The coating formulators often refer to the terms conventional solvent based and high solid epoxy coatings. Conventional systems have high VOCs in the range of 450 to 600 gram per litre. The epoxy resin is a solid type cutting solvent and the curing agent is usually a high molecular weight polyamide. This system will deliver a pot life of six hours and appear to lacquer dry within one hour as the solvent evaporates from the system. With the high solids coating, the VOC is lower, less than 250 gram per litre. In this case, it is based on a low molecular weight, low viscosity liquid epoxy resin. The curing agent can also be a polyamide type However, in this case, the molecular weight is much lower, resulting in lower initial viscosity. For high solid system, the use of low molecular weight components results in higher epoxy and amine concentrations, hence these will react faster, so we observe a very short pot life, typically one hour, and dry time is extended since the system does not lacquer dry. In this case, the dry time is dependent upon the degree of cross-linking. In this slide, we highlight data from a Miller-McCoskill study. On the left, we are measuring the time to achieve the gel point as a function of epoxy conversion and molecular weight buildup. With a conventional solvent-based system, 
the starting molecular weight is already high at T0, and the system is only required to undergo 20% conversion to achieve the gel point. With a high solid system, this starts from a relatively low molecular weight after mixing, and needs to achieve 20% conversion in order to reach the same molecular weight as that of the solvent borne system at T0. With a high solid coating, it is estimated that this needs to achieve greater than 33% conversion to reach the gel point. Therefore, this explains why we observe longer thin film dry times with these types of high solid epoxy coatings. On the right, we are modeling the cross-link density buildup. The high solid system takes longer to build up molecular weight. However, after 50% cure, both systems have comparable cross-link density. With the high solid system, this continues to increase so that by the time full conversion has occurred, the cross-link density is typically two times that of a conventional solvent-based polyamide coating. There are added performance benefits here, such as improved chemical resistance. However, if the cross-link density is too high, these coatings may become brittle and lose their flexibility. The key takeaway message here is that reducing VOC and developing high solid systems creates challenges. A move to lower molecular weight, lower viscosity materials means that the working life is impacted. It will get shorter simply due to higher concentration of reactants and thus kinetics being more of a factor. Longer dry times are observed since high solid systems require a higher degree of conversion versus conventional solvent based technology in order to achieve the effective gel point. Also, higher cross-link density is achieved, which can provide some added performance benefits, but may also reduce some of the properties, such as flexibility, observed in conventional solvent-based systems. Factoring into account some of these constraints, our goal is to develop a new amine curative, which can promote the faster chemical dry and through cure in high solid epoxy systems and provide differentiated performance properties. Now I will focus on the new polycyclic amine crosslinker referred to as PolyHCA, which has been developed to deliver faster property development in two component epoxy coatings. This section covers a description of the polycyclic amine, a brief comparison with other aliphatic and cycloaliphatic amines and a demonstration of the faster through cure capabilities it provides. PolyHCA amine is a new polycyclic amine building block. It is a medium viscosity water white liquid compliant with current EU polymer definition. The amine has an average of three active NH groups with a unique combination of primary, secondary and tertiary amine character. A representative structure is depicted herein. In clear coats, PolyHCA demonstrates an excellent balance of dry speed and good early hardness buildup over a range of application temperatures. At 25 degrees centigrade, the thin film set time as measured by phase 3 on a BK recorder is 1.5 hours, with excellent PERSO hardness, 250, achieved after 24 hours. When applied at 5 degrees C, the phase 3 dry speed is 5.5 hours with almost 200 perso hardness achieved within 48 hours. Coatings develop high gloss at ambient with some haze observed at lower application temperatures. However, this can be eliminated via further derivatization as will be described later. To understand the cure mechanism of the polyHCA amine, dynamic mechanical analysis DMA was conducted in order to provide us with both mechanical property and cross-link density information. On the left, this graph compares the average molecular weight between cross-links of polyHCA with an aliphatic amine and a cycloaliphatic amine following one, three and seven days cure at 25 degrees C. After one day, the MC value for polyHCA is low, indicative of a system with a high degree of cross-linking and the fact the value remains relatively unchanged over the next six days demonstrates most of the cross-link density has built up within the first 24 hours. With the cycloaliphatic, one-day MC values are high, a sign of low initial cross-link density. However, we observe the MC value decreasing 
as the cross-link network continues to develop following additional days of cure. Moving over to the right, the second figure shows a comparison of storage modulus G prime after one day cure. With polyHCA, this provides the highest value and the profile is relatively flat, which indicates a high degree of cure, formation of a rigid type polymer and no additional post cure in the rheometer. By comparison with the standard cycloaliphatic amine, we can see that this amine provides a low G prime number is less rigid and there is a sharp increase in the rubbery region. This indicates the cycloaliphatic amine provides a good initial cure profile, but there is still a significant degree of post-cure developing taking place. Finally, this graph highlights the differences between the new amine versus a conventional tertiary amine, which is often used to accelerate amine epoxy coatings. Here we are using infrared to monitor the buildup of the hydroxyl concentration on model epoxy coatings, one based on polyHCA and the other with a tertiary amine. With polyHCA we see a high concentration of OH groups being formed, which is a result of the amine ring opening the epoxy and undergoing true amine epoxy cross-linking. In the case of the tertiary amine, there is hardly any hydroxyl formed, which means after initial ring opening, the oxygen within the epoxy backbone reacts with additional oxyrane to form ether linkages. That is, this amine drives the epoxy homopolymerization process. Therefore, we can conclude that the infrared analysis supports the theory that polyHCA acts as a fast, true cross-linker with epoxy resin. So in summary, polyHCA in two component epoxies has the capability to provide rapid conversion of both epoxy and primary amine functionality. Reactivity profile allows for rapid molecular weight buildup and faster cross-link density development compared to other amines. And a unique structure preferentially drives cross-linking in favor of homopolymerization versus conventional tertiary amines. So far, we have demonstrated the features and benefits of this new polycyclic amine. However, for our epoxy curing agent business, success is the ability to leverage this amine technology and use it in the design of curing agents, which then provide added value to our customers. So in this final section, I will highlight the performance attributes of a new class of polyamide curing agents and focus on where this curing agent platform can deliver enhanced benefits in the area of high performance two pack epoxy coatings. RDPA1 and RDPA2 are two rapid dry polyamide prototypes. These candidates are low in viscosity, typically in the range 500 to 2000 millipascal seconds. They are high in solids and, like many polyamides, have a broad use level in epoxy systems. RDPA1 has a preferred loading of 60 to 65 PHR, whereas RDPA2 is a little higher in the range of 75 to 85 PHR. RDPA1 has been developed for rapid cure, return to service epoxy coatings, where application temperatures range from ambient to more harsh environments such as 5 degrees C and below. RDPA2 is a formulated product delivering very fast set times at 25 degrees C. This technology provides an excellent coating base allowing for very rapid overcoatability and is thus an ideal technology for wet on wet applications. Here we focus initially on RDPA1 and a comparison with two reference polyamides, HSPA1 and HSPA2, which are typical of modified polyamides used in the industry today. As mentioned, the initial curing agent viscosity of RDPA1 is low, so provides formulators with the benefit that it can be used to produce low VOC coating formulations. For epoxy clear coats mixed and applied at 25 degrees C, 
we experience a shortening of the pot life, which is to be expected, but clearly manageable. The surface appearance is excellent and the adhesion and impact resistance is in line with typical high solid polyamide performance. Where we see benefits is at the lower application temperatures. At 5 degrees C, comparing it to HSPA1, we see an immediate improvement in the surface appearance, where the new prototype exhibits high gloss and a blush-free surface. The water spotting resistance is comparable, but when we examine the films for coating integrity using MEK double rub method, there is a significant difference in coating performance. After one day cure, when you apply an MEK swab on the coating, the film remains intact with a slight loss of gloss after 200 double rubs. After three days cure at 5 degrees C, the coatings still provide greater than 200 double rubs, but no loss of gloss or damage on the surface is observed. With the two reference polyamides, following one day cure, both systems are immediately destroyed as soon as the MEK swab is placed on the film, highlighting that the coatings have no real integrity, and that is, they may appear dry to touch, but there is insufficient cross-linking, hence the coatings provide no chemical resistance. After three days at 5 degrees C, there is some improvement in the reference polyamides, but even then the MEK double rubs are less than 100. This clearly demonstrates the new technology provides a greater degree of early through cure to form highly cross-linked three-dimensional matrix with superior barrier properties compared to additional high solid polyamides. Here we can see the difference in the low temperature cure profiles of RDPA1 versus the two reference polyamides. When we assess the thin film dry speed using the BK recorder for clear coats, with a wet film thickness of 150 microns, we clearly see a significant improvement as the application temperature is lowered. For RDPA1, the phase 3 dry speed is approximately 15 hours, whereas for a polyamide addict, HSPA2, we observe approximately 30 hours, and for the traditional high solid polyamide, HSPA1, the dry speed is closer to 48 hours and the films are inherently tacky to touch. Moving to the right, an estimated degree of cure for systems cured at 5 degrees C was obtained via residual exotherm measurements using differential scanning calorimetry. Here we clearly see the coatings based on RDPA1 has achieved a higher degree of cure versus the two reference candidates. After one day, RDPA1 achieves 70% cure compared to 45% and 30% for HSPA2 and HSPA1 respectively. After seven days, values close to 90% cure are achieved. While both reference polyamides slowly increase the degree of cure over time, with HSPA1 the degree of cure is still less than 50%. And after seven days, and this would explain why the polyamide technology wouldn't be recommended for aggressive, low temperature cure environments. By incorporating our new poly HCA amine technology in RDPA1, we are now able to produce a derivatized polyamide platform which provides superior low temperature cure and addresses some of the performance gaps with conventional high solid systems. Here we provide a photo visual of the low temperature cure benefits. On the right, we have a typical high solid polyamide which is promoted for low temperature cure. Under these conditions, we clearly see that the films have poor surface appearance and a loss of gloss. This is also observed with other technologies such as phenalkamides and some manic based concepts. On the left, we have clear coats based on RDPA1 applied at both ambient and low temperature. You can see that at 5 degrees centigrade, RDPA1 provides clear coats with high clarity. This again highlights the excellent compatibility and film formation properties of the new polyamide technology based on poly-HCA amine.
So far, we have shown that this new curing agent concept provides excellent through cure properties. This attribute also translates into a very rapid touch dry when the coating reaches a stage in the cross-linking development and an early tie-in of the next coating layer is achievable. RDPA2 is a 30% PVC epoxy primer. It is capable of providing a 15-minute touch dry time. By comparison, the conventional high solid polyamide takes 200 minutes to achieve the same tack free state. In this table, we have three different test protocols. The first is an epoxy primer applied onto steel and following cure both the wet and dry crosshat adhesions are measured. In this case, the epoxy primer based on all three curing agents provides excellent adhesion. The second set is where a polycarbamide, a blocked amine polyisocyanate coating, is applied after the epoxy primer has cured for 15 minutes. The third set is where the epoxy primer has been allowed to cure for 60 minutes before application of the isocyanate based coating. When the cross hatch adhesion is measured for the new polyamide RDPA2 and RDPA1, the results for both wet and dry are all 5A, which is the highest rating. By comparison with the reference polyamide, HSPA1, a significant level of delamination of the polycarbamide top coat is observed, resulting in crosshatch ratings in the range of 1A to 2A. These photographs depict a similar observation. On the left is an epoxy primer based on RDPA1 overcoated with a polycarbamide at two different time intervals, 15 and 60 minutes. Here we observe excellent overcoatability and intercoat adhesion. With the conventional high solid polyamide, HSPA1, there is a loss of adhesion for overcoated systems, 15 minutes after application and there is no improvement when the polycarbamide is applied following 60 minute cure of the epoxy primer. So this system exhibits both poor overcoatability and poor intercoat adhesion. You can also observe that the system on the right also down glosses when the polycarbamide is applied. On the left, 60 degree specular gloss is around 80 units and the photo on the right shows approximately 50 units. As with all new curing agents, while we strive to provide improved handling and cure properties, the proof of the technology is whether the systems provide the long-term corrosion protection required for a wide range of industrial protective and marine applications. Here we put together a model anti-corrosive primer formulation and conducted 2000 hour salt spray test. The primer is based on zinc phosphate as a 35% PVC level and a VOC of less than 250 gram per litre. Coatings have a typical dry film thickness of 200 microns. Using ASTM B117 and D1654, we see that the RDPA1 easily provides 2000 hours salt spray resistance, with no damage to the scribe and no visible field blistering. Corrosion resistance performance being comparable to that of the reference system based on HSPA1. In addition, when assessed for cathodic despondment, we also see that RDPA1 provides excellent performance. In this example, we applied a 25% PVC coating at 200 gram per litre VOC with a total dry film thickness of approximately 450 microns. Using a cathodic despondment cell containing artificial seawater and applying a 1.5 volt potential for 28 days, we observe minimal lifting and radial creep for the coatings tested. Based on these results, we can state that the technology has potential to meet the ASTM G8 standard for cathodic despondment in pipes and marine applications. So with the new curing agent technology, the faster cure speed and property de development makes it an ideal technology for use in all the key market segments. For marine, we can offer technology which provides faster cure under adverse conditions 
ideal for epoxy primers and midcoats. For protective, field applied, again faster property development and a robust performance over a range of field conditions. Epoxy primers and epoxy midcoats as well as rapid overcoatability with polyurethane top coats. For industrial factory applied, the technology is ideal for coating systems where rapid property development in controlled environments is required, with the advantage that this technology works well for wet on wet applications, epoxy primers overcoated with polycarbamides or polyurethanes within 20 minutes of the epoxy primer being applied. Evonik has developed a new polycyclic amine concept which allows for rapid cross-linking of epoxy resins with minimal levels of homopolymerization leading to faster three-dimensional cross-link network. The new amine technology has enabled the development of advanced polyamide curing agents that exhibit an excellent balance of low temperature cure while maintaining the excellent adhesion and corrosion resistance properties required for long-term corrosion protection. The fast set to touch combined with early solvent resistance enables the epoxy base coat to be top coated with a range of polyisocyanates within a very short application time, making the technology ideal for use in automotive and industrial maintenance applications. This is new technology and it meets the industry driver for speed, providing enhanced productivity and a faster return to service. Here, in addition to my co-authors, I would like to acknowledge my fellow colleagues for their contribution in both the development and technical input into the understanding and design of these exciting technologies developed by Vonic. Well, this ends my presentation, and thank you very much for listening.